In this video, we're going to take a look at Bayes' rule, which is arguably the most famous rule of probability theory. It's famous because it provides a model for an important process in human reasoning, namely learning from experience. A Bayes' rule can tell us how we should modify the strength of our belief in a particular hypothesis after we've learned some new bit of evidence. In this video, we're just going to show how Bayes' rule follows from the general rule for conditional probabilities and look at two example calculations. Here's the general rule for conditional probability. It serves as the basic definition of conditional probability in probability theory. We can rewrite this formula by swapping out the numerator with the general formula for conjunctions. This is just a rearranged form of the general conditional probability rule, so we're really just swapping around terms here. What we have now is the simplest form of Bayes' rule, but there's a more useful formulation that is more commonly used, which we get by rewriting the denominator in terms of the total probability of B. If you don't have a clue where the expression for total probability comes from, then I'd recommend watching the previous tutorial where we derived it. But this is one of the working versions of Bayes' rule. It's one of the versions we generally use in calculations. Now let's look at the problem we left off with at the end of the last tutorial and see how Bayes' rule can be used to solve it. We're given two boxes, each with a different proportion of red and green balls in them. Box 1 has 5 red and 5 green balls, while box 2 has 7 red and 3 green. A box is randomly chosen, we don't know which one, and a ball is drawn. The ball that we drew is green. Question: What is the probability that the ball came from box 1, or alternately from box 2? The information on the right summarizes what we know about the setup. The probability of picking any given box is 0.5 because it's random. And the probability of picking a green ball out of any particular box is given by the proportion of green balls in the box which are 0.5 and 0.3 respectively. Now, what is it that we want to calculate? It's this, the probability that box 1 was selected given that the ball is green. Now let's look at Bayes' rule. This is the general rule in terms of generic A's and B's. We need to rewrite this in terms of G, B1, and B2. Note that A is going to become B1, the event of choosing box 1. What is not A? Well, the setup says that we've only got two options, box 1 or box 2. So if it's not box 1, then it's got to be box 2. So not A is going to be replaced with B2, the event of selecting box 2. And here's what we get when we make those substitutions. This is Bayes' rule for this particular question. And notice that every term in this expression is known. They're all on the side in the information given. So now we just substitute, and we get this. You see now how the numbers are actually pretty easy to work with. When we evaluate the products and do the sums, we get the answer. The probability that the ball came from box 1 is 0.625, or 62.5%. This example illustrates how the Bayes calculation models learning from experience. Before we knew the color of the ball, we were completely ignorant about which box was chosen, and the probability of it coming from box 1 was just 50%, reflecting this ignorance. Now, after having come to know the color of the ball, we can revise the probability of the hypothesis and see that it's more likely that the ball came from box 1 than from box 2. Which is exactly what we would expect given the proportions of green and red balls in the boxes. But Bayes' rule gives us a precise estimate of how much more likely it is. That's the power of the rule. Now can you guess what the probability is of the ball coming from box 2? There are two ways to do this, a short way and a longer way. The short way is just to realize that we've only got two possibilities here and their probabilities have to add up to one in this particular case. So the short way is like this. The probability is 0.375 or 37.5%. The longer way to do it is to solve Bayes' rule for box 2 instead of box 1. The setup looks like this. And when you plug in the right values, you get this. And then when you evaluate the products and do the sums, you get this. Which is the same answer. So it works either way. Now let's look at another example. Here's a typical sort of problem you often see on math tests. Two computer companies sell computer chips to a technology company. Company A sold 100 chips of which 5 were defective, and Company B sold 300 chips of which 21 were defective. Question: What is the probability that a given defective chip came from Company B? When we approach a problem like this, the first thing we should do is define our variables and write down what we know in terms of those variables. So let A equal the chip came from company A, let B equal the chip came from company B, 
and let D equal the chip is defective. The question we're being asked to solve is, what is the probability of B, that the chip came from company B, given D, that it was defective? Now let's write down what we know. Here are the conditional probabilities of getting a defective chip from each of the companies, respectively. You can just read these off the question. 5 out of 100 and 21 out of 300, which give us 0 0.05 and 0 0.07 when we simplify them. Now we're also going to need the unconditional probabilities for A and B. The prior probabilities before taking into account the new information that the chip is defective. In this case, the prior probabilities aren't 50-50. They aren't distributed equally across the alternatives. The question says that 400 chips in total were bought, with 100 coming from company A and 300 coming from company B. So any random chip is more likely to have come from B than from A. More precisely, the prior probability of a chip coming from company A is 0.25, or 25%, and from company B, it's 0.75, or 75%. These prior probabilities are also called base rates. It turns out that people often ignore information about base rates when estimating probabilities. It's called the base rate fallacy. We'll look more closely at base rate fallacies in the course on fallacies of probabilistic reasoning. Now, to solve this problem, all we have to do is apply Bayes rule. Here's Bayes rule. When we substitute our values, we get this, 81%. The prior probability of any given chip coming from company B was 75%. But once we learned that the chip was defective, and we knew the ratio of defective chips that came from company B, this information raised the probability that the defective chip came from company B to 81%. Okay, I think this will do for an introduction to Bayes' rule. In the tutorial course on fallacies of probabilistic reasoning, we'll come back to Bayes' rule and talk about how most people's intuitive judgments about conditional probabilities are flawed because they fail to consider base rates, the prior probabilities of events in their estimates. This can have very serious consequences when we're dealing with, for example, a doctor's estimate of how likely it is that someone has the HIV virus, given that they've tested positive for it. But we'll save that discussion for another course.